Hey guys, Steampunk Slicer Gaming here again. If you saw my last video, the unboxing, um, I showed you guys the some of the mod parts that I got. Exactly what I'm going to be doing here is uh, changing out the speaker on this Game Boy Advance. These are pretty quiet. Um, they're often prone to being even more quiet if dirt or other debris gets on this speaker cone here. This one's not too bad. I'll try to save it. The other Game Boy that I got in the mail um, with this one has a problem with the volume where if you turn it up all the way, it goes quiet. I don't know if that's a capacitor problem, a speaker problem, but I thought it'd be cool to film uh, my progress and share it with y'all. So without further ado, let's get into this. So first things first, gonna turn on my soldering iron, let it heat up. Um, what we'll be doing first is removing this speaker, which is connected by these two wires, which go into the board here. You can see that. Soldered there. So what we'll do is remove that solder um, and then pull the speaker out, set it aside and start working on the, if I can keep that in frame, there you go. We'll work on setting up the clean amp, Game Boy amp, um, and the new speaker. All right, my soldering iron is all warmed up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and remove this speaker. Uh, bear in mind that I'm by no means an expert in the realm of all this. I've mainly watched videos on how to do this and read tutorials. I have not done this before. So if you want to do this for yourself, I highly recommend going um, and checking out the links I posted or put in the description. Um, and also just doing a quick Google search will usually return something. So what I have here is some solder removal wire. Uh, wick. This is basically just braided wire with flux in it. I think that's what's in it. Correct me if I'm wrong. But what you do is you put this on top of the solder you want to remove. Put your soldering iron on it and it'll wick it in to this. What I'm going to do first though is apply a little bit of flux to these two contacts. Um, this just helps clean up the area, uh, prepares it for soldering. What we're gonna do now is add a little bit of solder to those points there. That'll just help with the removal process. Another thing to keep in mind when you're using a uh, desoldering wick, this stuff gets hot because it the heat transfers along it, so just be mindful of that. Turn up our soldering iron a little bit more. Let's see. Now, wick some of that solder up into the wire. And the pad is looking a little bit better. Go out that a little bit more. And 
I'm also being very careful not to accidentally lay the soldering wick across anything else. Basically any of these little small electronical components around here. Um, they're very easy to float the solder and remove them before you know what happened. So just be mindful of that. focus there we go as you can see those two no longer have much solder on them i um, gonna work at that a little bit more off camera and see if I can't get that undone all right there we go got that off just took a little bit of heating up those two uh, pads right there and that loosened up what little solder was left, and I was able to just pull the wires off. So we got this, we're going to set that aside. We're going to clean up these a little bit more. Just get that residual solder out of there. Go ahead and flip the board over and clean the other side. and there we go all right the next thing to do is to clean up any areas that flux was used on just get a q-tip or cotton swab wherever you're from um, get some high percentage isopropyl alcohol i personally like to use 90 percent or higher um, i'm currently using 99 percent um, which you can usually find in a grocery market or drugstore. Just clean that off, let it dry, and I don't know if you can see it, but there was a little bit of browning on there. That's just some leftover um, residue, and it cleaned right off on both sides. The next thing we're going to do is start soldering the wires onto this chip here. This is the amp. Um, and to give you an idea of how small this thing is, this is the original speaker. So those pads are really tiny. After a bit of trial and error, I found out that it's better to have this um, secured to the GBA motherboard. I did this with some Gorilla double-sided tape. Um, Pick this up in a uh, craft store. It works pretty good. There's a little bit of hair on there. I have dogs, so it's bound to get on there. But this stuff works pretty good. Um, so I just adhered it to the back of the board, cut around it. I give it a little bit of margin to where I'm not going to melt stuff underneath the solder pads. The same with here. And this way I don't have to wire ever or solder everything to the board and then to this board i can just do it on this board and then go from there that way distances are a little bit easier to judge and i don't have to have wires too long which is what happened the wires were too long to close up the case
and there we go. Nice, tidy, everything short and uh, not gonna get in the way. The speaker will just rest on top of it like that. So uh, next thing to do is to put this in the case and test it out. All right, I got it all put back together, kind of. Um, it's not like we're testing the screen right now. Uh, I have it at full volume, so let's see what it sounds like. Oh my gosh. That's at full volume. That's way more than the original Game Boy. Uh, let's try it. Let's see. Find half volume. So that's about... That seems to be about half. That's about the um, sound of the original Game Boy. And here's the new speaker, full blast. I could say there's a definite <laughs> improvement in that. Uh, it's not gonna like blow your eardrums out. Um, from what I know, there is a resistor on the board. Well, let's open this back up and I'll show you. All right. Sorry about the changing light conditions. I'm still trying to figure all this out. Um, but anyways, as I was saying, there is a resistor on this board. I believe it is this one right here. Oh, there we go. Sorry. I believe it's this one right here. And if you bridge that, there's obviously no resistance because there's no resistor. And it gets even louder. So I'm going to keep it as is. I'm very pleased with the uh, results of this. Um, I'm actually really excited that that strip of double-sided tape worked because it holds this on and it looks really clean um, as far as like the board goes. The wires are... Uh, I could probably fix those up a little bit more if I wanted to, but I like the way this turned out and I'm really excited for the rest of this mod. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I have a whole bunch of links down in the description. Um, check those out. There's people that you'll want to follow if you wanna find out how to do this a more professional way. They've been doing it for years. And also, uh, Handheld Legends story link will be in the description as well. That's where I got all of my uh, all of these products from. If you like this video, hit that like button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.